QuickBooks Online 2023. Manage users. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have open in an incognito window, the free QuickBooks Online test drive sample company, which if you want open at the same time as your company file, you would need to open in an incognito window or in another browser. If support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. If you're using Google Chrome, you can find the incognito window by going to the three dots up top and go down to new incognito window, then type into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We will be using these two files primarily to look at the differences between the business view and the accountant view. With Get Great Guitars, I'm gonna be in the accountant view, my preferred view, and then jump over to the sample company to look at where things are located under the business view. To change the views, you can go to the cog dropdown and switch to the accountant or business view down here. So also note that we're zoomed in a little bit. So I've hold control and zoom up a little bit. I'm currently at the one, two, five percent on the zoom in. Now, quick recap of our objective, our objective as a business revenue generation as the accountant or bookkeeper, we want to be able to facilitate the financial transactions and record them so that we can create the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement and related reports for whatever they need to be used for, which could include taxes amongst other things. And we also wanna communicate with the people we do business with, that being the customers, the vendors, the employees, as smoothly as possible, so the business can focus on what they do to generate revenue and not have to spend or spend as little time as possible uh, doing kind of the accounting stuff. So that's what our job is on the bookkeeping side of things. How do we do that? We set up the company file, then we set up the underlying foundational things, which include lists, meaning the chart of accounts, the products and the items so that we can facilitate the financial transactions as easily as possible using the forms, which are found in the plus button and organized by cycle, customer, vendor and employee. And then we communicate with the people we do business with by going to the centers on the left hand side, the sales center, customer center, expense center, vendor center, and the, the payroll center, employee center. So what we're doing now is continuing with those foundational items that we need to set up uh, so that we can facilitate them the financial transactions. So I'm going to go to the cog dropdown. We looked last time at the account settings. Now we want to look at the manage users going into the manage users. Now this represents basically who has access to your QuickBooks files and notice that when you're in an online system as opposed to a desktop system, one of the benefits are that you can have multiple people that can access the file that aren't in say the same location. So you can give access to multiple people within uh, the QuickBooks file. Now we currently are in the plan that has the five users and you can, you have the accounting firm as well. So if you go over to the accounting tab, I don't believe that's included as one of the five users. And for most small businesses, this is going to be a great tool because at the end of the year, you've got to give this information to the accountant oftentimes, at least for tax preparation, if not for other needs for financial reporting needs as well. And you also might want to ask questions uh, with the accountant about the bookkeeping process. So it used to be that you would have to do that possibly by printing out a bunch of reports, printing out the income statement at the least in order to generate the taxes. And then you got phone calls going back and forth and whatnot. But if you can give them access to the actual file, then they can look through the actual file when the questions come up and hopefully find uh, what they need in order to, to 
uh, fill out the tax return. So that's gonna be the accountant firm separate. If I go back ov over to the users then, typically of course, we're gonna have the main user so that sets up, that's gonna be the admin user. And then you might wanna have other users that are gonna be helping you out with the bookkeeping. Obviously a small company might just have one user, for example, and possibly the accountant. As the company grows, you might have different people that are helping to manage the QuickBooks. And that's when it gets more complex. And that's when you also get into the situation of whether or not you need to increase the level of the plan. So just a quick recap, if I go back to the Intuit website and just look at the different plans we have here, you've got the simple start, the essentials, the plus and the advanced. The simple start, you have a very limited users, right? And you don't have any included users. And then over here on the essentials, one of the main things that you get is it includes the three users. So you can invite your accountant to access your books, control your access levels, and share reports uh, without sharing uh, a login. So you can have multiple users without sharing a login. And then we're currently in the plan with five users. This is kind of like the standard one. Let's go and see more here. Save time when you work together, invite your accountant to access, give employees specific access to features and reduce errors with auto uh, syncing. So in other words, now you, you're thinking you've got multiple people working in the QuickBooks file. You, your next step in uh, as you grow is to enter internal controls within to the system, meaning you don't want everybody logged in as the admin. You want to limit the things that they can do within the system. And then you, you further want to limit the information as you grow so they don't have access to every component of the accounting process. And then protect sensitive data with user access levels and share reports within uh, the sharing a sign-in. And then oftentimes as companies grow, the number of users going up from there includes more than five becomes a significant important component because again, you come to more specialized internal controls as you, have, as you have more people working in the accounting department. So if I go back on over here, we currently have the one user. If you wanted to add another user, you can uh, invite them. So let's see what that process looks like. I'm gonna add a user here. And then it says this, uh, this count towards your user limit. So standard user, that means uh, you can give them full or limited access without admin privilege. So they're not the admin, but they have, they have full or limited access. And then you've got the company admin. Uh, they can see and do everything. This includes sending money, changing passwords, and adding users. Not everyone should be an admin. So usually the setup would be you've got one admin and then you set the rest up as standard. That would be the typical kind of process you would think. So these don't count toward your user limit. So then you have reports, meaning we have five users. They're saying these don't count towards our user limits. Uh, they can see all reports. So now we're just giving someone access to the report. So if you're doing business with someone and you're, and they want the financial information, you can of course print the reports and give them to someone, but you might say, Hey, look, here's, here's access to all the reports. So you can see whatever reports you want. They just don't have the capacity to do any changes in your account. That's also another option that you could give say to an accountant. If you, if you just want your accountant to look up the information they need in order to do the taxes and you don't want them to do anything to your to your account or anything like that have any other access then you could possibly give them this one down here and again it doesn't count towards your user limit which is nice so and then it says uh, great news you have a quickbooks time subscription invite your your team so that you can also invite them uh, in a time situation to enter basically enter their time as well and so i won't get into that right now but let's go well just a quick overview on it. You know, that means that they can basically enter their time into the system. And the time is something that you can use to invoice with and or to use as part of the uh, payroll process. So let's go to the next. And then we've got our options. So how much access do you want this user to have? So we've got all access, uh, payroll access. You can have all and you can check off the payroll. They can say none here. And then no, no accounting features access. This user can't use any of the accounting features, but you can still let them manage certain things and submit their own timesheets. So you might use that in that scenario where you want them to enter basically the timesheets and have very limited access. 
and then you've got limited. If you choose limited, then you've got your items down here, the customers and the vendors. So remember, we talked about the cycles. So usually when you're working in an accounting department, you might be working in a particular cycle. So if I jump on over to the flow chart here, we've got the vendors, the customers and the employees. So as things become more specialized, you might be working in just the vendor cycle or the accounts payable or the purchases cycle, the expenses cycle, or you might just be working on the customer side of things. And then further, as you get larger, you're going to be wanting to separate uh, duties within the cycles. So it becomes more difficult for people to basically commit fraud, right? So I'm going to close this back out. So if you choose the customers, then this is what they have. This user can enter estimates, invoices, sales receipt, credit memos, and refunds. So those are typically the things, the forms and the customer cycle, enter chargers and credits, create and delete statements. So the statements are the things that are used to, to try to collect on the accounts receivable, which if you're in an accrual system is going to often be a large part of the job. Uh, when you're working there, i uh, receive payments from customers, fill out timesheet for anyone, add, edit, and uh, delete customers, products, and services. So that might be part of the, you know, the, the, the process when you're billing someone to add the customers as you're doing and the products and services, what you're selling, view customer register and reports, view tax rates and aging settings use and adjust sales tax and sales transactions and general journal entries, including manually overriding calculated tax amounts, and then add, edit and delete currencies, and then edit uh, uh, exchange rates. They can't uh, print checks, including refunds, make bills and purchases billable to customers, uh, add, edit and delete accounts and quantity on hand, view bank registers, see total income and expense amounts on home vendor and in customer pages, run tax reports or view tax history, prepare or file a sales tax return or record sales payments, set up new or charge existing tax agencies or settings, set up multi currencies, perform home currency adjustments. If you go to the vendor side, you could select both of them. If we go to the vendor side of things, then you've got the in vendor information, which you would think would be mainly the forms included in this cycle on the flow chart. And so you've got the enter in the bills, enter cash, enter pay bills, print checks, add, edit, uh, view vendor AP, view tax rates, use and adjust sales tax, run tax reports, and so on there. So those are the two options. Let's say that we just go with all here on them. And then I'm going to say next and then select user settings. Do you want this user to add, edit and remove users? So the default is no. And that would typically be the case because usually that would be something you would expect done by the admin. Do you want this user to edit company info? Again, no, usually would be the case because you would think that would be done by the admin. Do you want this user to manage subscriptions? And you probably say no, because usually you would want that to be done by the admin account. So I'm going to say next. And then uh, what's what's their current their contact info. So we'll invite them. So you put their name and then their email and then they can be invited from there. And then once we've done that. So now I've in, I've invited someone here and and then they haven't accepted so I can resend the invitation. If I so choose, then I would contact them and say, Hey, you should get an email with the invitation on their side. The email should look something like this. It says, hi, uh, they've asked you to join the QuickBooks plus team for get great guitars, uh, ready to get started. The let's go. I got questions and so on. So we can then go to the let's go and on the acceptance process. So then we have the sign in on this side of things. So one account for everything into it, including QuickBooks. So then they would have to accept the invitation and then it would say success. You have access to get great guitars on their side of things. So we'll open it up and they have the welcome page. We're glad you're here. Here's what we'll do together and so on and so forth. And so I'll just say uh, next, what's your main role? I'm going to say, uh, let's say employee next. And then what do you want to do today? Start QuickBooks. I'm just going to skip the intro. And then there it is. 
So let's go, let's go then. And so now I'm in on the other side. I'm in another browser uh, and looking, looking at it thusly. So there we have it. So now we're in it here. And so there's our, our information up top and I should have limited access to like the accounting information, for example. So if I go into here, you know, I can't change this stuff, right? I can't change this stuff up top because I have limited access. And then if I go back on over to this one, this is my admin account in the Get Great Guitars. And if I refresh it with a little refresh button, I should see that Jane has accepted at this point in time. So that has been accepted. So there we got it. And she is now in as a standard user. So it's a pretty, pretty nice system. And it's pretty easy to set up, like I say, with multiple people in, in basically different locations. Uh, you could set it up pretty easily and then we can edit we can edit from here if we needed to edit what we put in for them and edit their information thusly or we could uh, delete them from here so that's the general idea uh, i don't think we've done anything different in the accountant view versus the business view so if i open up the the business view notice that the cog is the same up top there's not any change there's there's the the plus button is the same over here the big change under the two views are going to be on this icons on the left hand side